Is it him das or das him? Never, never remember. I should know that. Oh, uh, welcome back. Uh, I'm glad you've decided to join us for another Robin Stats lecture. Uh, today we're going to be talking about box plots. Um, box plots are another way to visually represent um, the variability of our data set. Um, so let's start with the data set. So given a data set of 3, 4, 7, 11, 5, 9, 17, 10, 22, and 2, we want to figure out the median, the lower quartile, the upper quartile, and any outliers that might lie in this data set. So this is going to be a little bit of review for what we talked about previously. So let's do that. Um, so the first thing that we have to do if we're looking for medians and lower and upper quartiles is to reorder our data from smallest to largest. So if we reorder this, we get 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 9, 10, 11, 17, and 22. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 data points. So an even number of data points means that we don't have a middle value. Uh, but the fifth and sixth value in this order are going to be our two middles. So in this case, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we need to take the mean of 7 and 9. So our median is equal to 7 plus 9 divided by 2 or 8. And that breaks our data set in the middle here. And so now we want to ask what is the median of the lower half and what is the median of the upper half to get our lower and upper quartiles. So our lower half has one, two, three, four, five data points in it. So that means we have a middle value. And so that's going to be four. So our lower quartile is equal to four. Our upper half has one, two, three, four, five data points as well, as it should. So we have one, two, three, so 11 is going to be our upper quartile. And now we need to determine whether or not um, we have any outliers. And so to do that, we need the inner quartile range. So the inner quartile range, remember, is just going to be the upper quartile minus the lower quartile. In this case, that's 11 minus 4, or 7. And lastly, we can check for outliers by saying that outliers are any data point that is greater than the upper quartile uh, plus 1.5 times the inner quartile range, which in this case is going to be 11 plus 1.5 times 7, uh, which gives us um, 21.5. And any value that's less than the lower quartile minus 1.5 times the inner quartile range. In that case, that's going to be 4 minus 1.5 times the inner quartile range, which, oops, which in this case is 7. Uh, and that's going to give us a negative 6.5. So looking at all of this, our smallest data point is 2. So uh, there, that's not less than negative 6.5. So we have no outliers because they're too small. But anything bigger than 21.5 is going to be an outlier, and we have a data point of 22. So 22 is an outlier. All right. So we need some room to work. So I need to clean this up a little bit. Shazam! <laughs> That's better. Now, we want to talk about something new. We want to talk about box and whisker plots. Box and whisker plots give us a way 
of visually representing the variability in a data set. To do that, we use boxes and whiskers. So I've summarized some of the stuff that we've already calculated over here. We have a data set that has a mean of 8, a lower quartile of 4, an upper quartile of 11, and we know that 22 is an outlier. So we want to turn that into a box and whisker plot. So the first thing that we do is we draw a box on a number line from our lower quartile to our upper quartile. So our lower quartile is 4, which is approximately here, and our upper quartile is 11, which is approximately here. So we start with a box. And in that box, we're going to draw a line at our median. So our median is 8, and so that's going to be approximately here. So we have a line here. So now we have a box for our box and whisker plots. So now we need whiskers. So the whiskers are going to be lines that extend from either edge of the box to the largest and smallest non-outlier values. So we said that 22 is an outlier. It's, it's uncharacteristically large for this data set. So we don't have anything that's too small. So our smallest data point is 2. So if we put 2 on the number line here, then we make a whisker from the, the lower quartile, the bottom edge of the box, to 2. Our largest non-outlier is going to be 17, because we said that 22 is an outlier. So 17 is about here, so we extend a whisker out to 17. And then if you have any outliers, then you denote those on the number line with an asterisk. So 22 is about here, and so we're going to put an asterisk at 22. And so this represents the spread of our data on a number line. But how can we read the spread of this data? Well, remember previously, we said that if we were to put our, uh, our data on a number line and break it at the median, the lower quartile, and the upper quartile, then this is 25% of our data, this is 25% of our data, this is 25% of our data, and this is 25% of our data. Which means each segment of this box and whisker plot corresponds to 25% of our data. This whisker is from the edge of our data, that's not an outlier, up to the lower quartile, which is this segment. The first half of the box is from the lower quartile to the median, which is this segment. And the second half of the box is from the median to the upper quartile. That's going to be this 25%. And then the whisker from the top of the box to the top of our non-outlier data, plus the outlier, is going to be this 25%. Now what that means is that because each of these segments represents 25% of our data, each of these segments contains the exact same number of data points from our data set. And this is the part about box and whiskers that students have trouble with, is bigger segments of the box and whisker plot do not mean that there's more data there. In fact, it's the opposite. The bigger the, the spread on the box and whisker plot, the more spread out the data is there. And the smaller the, air, the segment on the box and whisker plot means that the data is more concentrated there because each segment contains the same number of data points. So uh, we have 25% of our data between the values of 2 and 4, and we also have 25% of our data between 11 and 17, including 22. So if we look at our original data set, Right? We can see that at the bottom here, our data is pretty close together. We have 2, 3, 4, 5, right? But on the upper end of our data set, we have 10, 11, 17, 22. So the data is more spread out on the upper half than it is on the bottom. And that means we get smaller, closer together segments of our box plot compared to the larger segments on the upper end.
I hope that makes some sense. We'll continue to practice in class, so look forward to that.